Hi, and welcome to Season 2 of That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What created the Potomsky Crater? Who was involved in the 1963 Great Train Robbery? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts and references for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa was a labor organizer. He went missing on July 30th, 1975. What happened to him? Jimmy Hoffa was born in Brazil, India on February 14th, 1913. Jimmy's father was a coal miner who died when Jimmy was young. After his father's death, Jimmy's mother went to work and eventually moved the family to Detroit, Michigan. Jimmy didn't have much education. In fact, he may not have gone to high school. He dropped out of school early in order to work and support his family. Jimmy worked on a loading dock for a grocery store, which is where he organized his first labor strike. The strike garnered Jimmy and his coworkers a much better contract. The workers used a shipment of strawberries as their bargaining chip. They refused to unload the shipment until they got a better contract. In 1936, Jimmy married Josephine Poswack. Together, they had two children, a daughter named Barbara, who later married and changed her name to Cranker, and a son named James P. Hoffa. Jimmy's children have both pushed for further investigation into Jimmy's disappearance. James, following in his father's footsteps, served as president of the Teamsters Union from 1999 to 2022. Jimmy Hoffa became a labor organizer in the 1930s. In those years, he joined the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, which according to the union itself was North America's strongest and most diverse labor union. In 1952, he became the vice president of the Detroit chapter of the union and in 1957, he ascended to the presidency. He served until 1967. Hoffa had a significant role in creating the first national freight hauling agreement for truck drivers in 1964. This agreement brought almost all truck drivers under one contract. The former president of the union, David Beck, had been tried and convicted on charges related to his union activities. Hoffa was also subjected to numerous investigations into his activities for the Union. Under President John F. Kennedy, the FBI and United States Attorney General Robert Kennedy kept a close eye on Hoffa's activities. They believed that Hoffa had help from organized crime. Together, they formed the Get Hoffa Unit of Prosecutors. The Justice Department indicted Hoffa several times, but were unable to convict him until 1964. In March of 1964, Jimmy Hoffa was found guilty of bribery and jury tampering related to his 1962 federal trial for conspiracy. In July of 1964, Hoffa was convicted of misusing funds from the union's pension. Hoffa spent three years appealing the convictions, but was never successful in doing so. He began serving his sentence in 1967 in Lewisburg Federal Prison in Pennsylvania, before his sentence was commuted by President Richard Nixon in 1971. A condition of the commutation was that Hoffa couldn't hold a leadership role in the Union until 1980. Hoffa fought the ban in court and worked behind the scenes to regain control of the Union. While trying to regain control, Hoffa went missing on July 30, 1975. On that day, Hoffa left his home for a meeting with local crime figure Anthony Tony Jack Giacalone and a mob-connected union leader from New Jersey, Anthony Tony Pro Providenzo, at a restaurant in Bloomfield Township. The meeting was supposed to take place at Marcus Red Fox Restaurant, and the subject was to be about settling a feud but Hoffa was the only one who showed up. He was last sighted at the restaurant about 25 miles from Detroit. 
Hoffa's car was found in the restaurant's parking lot, but there were no clues as to his whereabouts. Hoffa was declared presumed dead in 1982. Since 1975, there have been a number of conspiracy theories related to Jimmy Hoffa. Some believe that Hoffa was killed by organized crime. Others believe federal agents killed Hoffa. There are those that believe that Hoffa was not killed, but just ran away. In 2020, some theorized that Roland McMaster, a teamster who worked with Hoffa and then became his enemy, killed Hoffa. Ralph Picardo told a federal grand jury that he was Tony Pro's driver. He said that Stephen Andretta confessed to him his role in the Hoffa murder conspiracy. According to Picardo, Andretta had said that Hoffa had been murdered in Detroit, stuffed into a five-gallon oil drum, and loaded into a gateway transportation truck, and then shipped to New Jersey. Picardo said that Andretta didn't tell him the name of Hoffa's killer, but that Tony Pro had been the one to put out the head. Some say Hoffa is buried under the old New York Giants football stadium. The authorities have received tips, but so far have been unable to find Hoffa's body. In 2002, authorities searched under a swimming pool in the yard of a Detroit house. In 2004, they searched under the floor of another Detroit home. In 2006, authorities searched on a horse farm. A 2012 tip led law enforcement officers to another Detroit home, but the investigation didn't turn up any evidence. Police had been informed that Hoffa was buried under a driveway. The authorities started with a radar scan of the area. The scan showed that some soil had been disturbed at some point, so the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality drilled for soil samples. The samples didn't reveal any bodies buried beneath. In June of 2013, the FBI searched a field in Oakland Township, Michigan, which is about 20 miles from Hoffa's last known location. Tony Zarelli had given the authorities information about Hoffa being buried there. Zarelli wrote an e-book describing how Hoffa died, saying that he'd been hit in the head with a shovel and buried alive. A 2017 movie by Martin Scorsese, The Irishman, was based on a 2003 book entitled I Heard You Paint Houses. In the book, mob hitman Frank the Irishman Sheeran said he killed Hoffa. Sharon was tied to the Buffalino crime family. He's one of 14 people who have taken responsibility for Hoffa's disappearance. The cast of the film included Robert De Niro as Sharon and Al Pacino as Hoffa. It debuted at the New York Film Festival in 2019. In July of 2020, Dan Moldia, who had researched the disappearance for 45 years at that point, wrote an article about the disappearance. Jonathan Quinty, investigative journalist for the Wall Street Journal, claimed to know the location of Hoffa's body. Thirteen days later, a second Moldea story about an adventure with Frank Coppola came out. Coppola worked at the landfill. Coppola told Moldea that Hoffa's body was in a landfill and he pointed out the location for Moldea. In 2021, a tip was received that Hoffa's body was buried in a landfill in New York City. The tip came from a friend of Capola. Capola's father had told Capola that he'd buried Hoffa's body in the landfill. Frank Capola had died in 2020 and had told a friend that his father had confessed to him that he'd been ordered by a gang to bury Hoffa's body underground in a steel drum. Agents got search warrants for the former landfill site and conducted a search on October 25th and 26th of 2021. On the same days, a search was conducted for Hoffa's body under the New Jersey Bridge. FBI Special Agent Mara Schneider explained that FBI personnel from the Newark and Detroit field offices used ground-penetrating radar to search the ground under the bridge. She went on to say that because the support for the warrant had been sealed, she was unable to provide any further details. What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Was he killed, or did he simply run away? If he was killed, who did it? Where is his body? What 
do you think? Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ruddy Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ruddy Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.